lot of what gets done in Super 8 is an integration of Super 8. A lot of people say, Phil, you know, like with all this digital, you know, isn't Super 8 going away? Well, the role that Super 8 plays in the market, which is sort of this uh, filmic, real raw filmic looking thing, is the same. Whether you're using it with a 35 millimeter film like that, my sister's keeper, or you're using it in a current project like this one, uh, which is shot primarily with a red camera, and then integrate Super 8 footage with the red. This gives you a good idea of how the two play in together. So the performance piece is done with the red camera. It's 30 something thousand dollar, 2K, state of the art, digital kind of thing. And then all these insert pieces are done with a 30 year old Super 8 camera. About two years ago, uh, I was contacted by a photographer friend of mine shooting a wedding um, for a VH1 producer out of New York. And she wanted her her wedding film shot on Super 8, and I thought, well, this is this is cool that this is kind of becoming hip again, and um, maybe I'll maybe I'll take this project on. And I went out and bought a uh, Canon 1014 XLS and kind of relearned the whole process of shooting film. I've been stuck in a digital world for a, a really long time, and I shot a couple test reels and. Um, you know, in this day and age, the internet and eBay, it's really easy to find equipment, and I, I'm sure you guys know this, but it's very affordable. Um, and to find Pro 8 millimeter as, as my test ground to, to figure out how this would look if I were to edit it in Final Cut, um, shot a couple rolls, and when I got the results back, I was kind of like, wow, this is gonna change how I make films from now on. I mean, it's just so easy, and it looks so awesome. It's really hard to do wrong. I mean. Actually, the more you mess up Super 8, the cooler it looks, I think. Um, agreed? I mean, it's, it's the organic nature of it, the, the more scratches and stuff. I mean, not to a ridiculous extent, but that's part of the beauty of it all. After you start to watch this stuff, you, you start to realize that there is a way to achieve very specific looks. And that's kind of the magic of it. Um, you can shoot something on black and white, and it kind of looks like rattle and hum or something. It's really cool. And then you can shoot something on on reversal and it'll, you know, if, you're, if you don't know the terminology, reversal is basically a positive image that you project on a wall. It's like the old school Kodachrome. And like Phil said, now there's negative stock, which is professional and it's the kind of thing where you go to telecine or scan and it, I mean, the resolution is really great. You know, you've got a mix of looking vintage, looking cutting edge, um, looking Art Nouveau, kind of cinema verite, whatever. And you can do this just by changing your cartridge. And that's kind of the cool thing about it for me. I'm an independent filmmaker. And what I think um, distinguishes me a little bit from the other panelists is that I primarily work in nonfiction and documentary. So um, shooting Super 8 has both um, its benefits and its challenges, um, especially when it comes to sound. In addition to kind of learning the, the archival um, techniques and, and how to use some footage, I also um, became interested in shooting my own Super 8. Um, but instead of shooting uh, reversal, um, I was pretty fascinated to learn about the ability to shoot on negative. This is mostly Kodak Vision 2 50D stocks that I shot for use in my most um, recent documentary film. So I shot this footage, you know, using, there's a little hair in the gate there, sorry, Phil. Um, I, I shot this using a, a camera that I got at a garage sale for $50. It was an old Shannon. It had manual focus, but no manual exposure. So I was using all auto exposure and got some pretty interesting results. You know, you, just depending on where you point the camera, you can get that silhouette if, you're, if your lighting's just right. There's a lot you can do, I think, on the super low budget with Super 8, and, and that was part of the um, appeal for me. Um, so as much as you can also try to make it look, you know, as good or better than the red, I think there's also something to be said for if you're going to go low budget, just go all the way and, you know, get, get your stuff at the, at the garage sales and, uh, you know, figure out how to do it all yourselves. My name is Brandon Lauer and I work with A. Brian Photo, which is a wedding photography and 8mm company out of Birmingham, Alabama. And... Uh, one of the things about our company is we are film shooters still. Um, the photographer is, he shoots with a classic Roloflex and we shoot with a Lomo and um, a Mia and we still uh, have an, a very analog feel that we like to, um, to incorporate in our photography because we, we like our images to feel classic and to last forever. Um, our, our thought is exactly what Adam was saying earlier, you know, new cameras come out, new styles of footage comes out, but 
a Rolleiflex and film will always be a Rolleiflex and film. You know, if you're shooting with something that's 30 years old already, um, it'd be tough for somebody to, to say it's outdated because you're kind of like, well, I know the medium I'm shooting with is outdated, but uh, if it looks good now and it looked good 30 years ago, odds, odds are it's going to look good in 30 years Wherever from now. So. You go, be love, love, love. Wherever you go, there'll be love, love, love. intentionally raw I think that kind of sums up you know the shooting style and it's okay to be a little fidgety or it's okay to kind of engage and interact with uh, who you're shooting because that really evokes that um, historical aspect of what your you know your parents or grandparents used to shoot so um, I think one thing that's important to note and we'll, we'll kind of have a Q&A here in a second but it's important to note that none, none of the four of us are trying to say you know what Let's all let's all go support eight millimeter, and we're gonna gonna rise up, and digital video will fall once again. Like, um, you know, that, that's not the approach we're trying to take at all. It's uh, we're simply trying to say there there is a a perfect time and a perfect place for it, and you know, all the the words we've said, nostalgia or artistic or you know, music or any time, you know, you really think it's appropriate, you know, use it because there are so many benefits that you've already heard. There's so many. Um, financial benefits and visual benefits and aesthetic benefits that it's okay to use digital and it's okay to use film and we are huge advocates of film and we love it and we're just saying just embrace it and uh, and people can tell when you try to put a filter on your digital video. <laughs>